So we have one more basic idea that we need to lock in for section 5.2, but I think this is a good time to take a break and plunge into some of the homework questions, and that will motivate the last idea that we need to talk about. Uh, so let's take a look at these three that I've picked out. Uh, be careful with the instructions here and don't do more work than you need to do. Uh, they're asking you to find the characteristic polynomial. They're asking you to find the eigenvalues, uh, but not the eigenvectors. So you don't have to do that. We know how to do that. And they, we don't need to do it again here. Um, that's 1 through 8. I didn't copy the instructions down for 10, but for 10 it's just the characteristic polynomial. You don't even have to find the eigenvalues. Uh, okay, so keep in mind, of course, what we're doing here, the basic idea for finding the characteristic polynomial and the eigenvalues is we have this a minus lambda i uh, times x equals zero, and the way we go about finding the lambdas that give us a solution besides the zero vector <laughs> is we take the determinant and set that equal to zero. So we're really looking for the determinant of a minus lambda i to be zero. That will tell us that matrix is not invertible, that there are free variables, that there's more than one solution to this homogeneous system, so that we will have actual eigenvectors, not just the zero vector that solves it. Okay. All that to say uh, for number four, we're jumping straight into saying I want the determinant of and subtract lambda from the main diagonal. So 8 minus lambda, 2, 3, and 3 minus lambda. So we want that determinant to be equal to 0. And you remember how the determinant of a 2 by 2 works. It's that AD minus BC. So we can go 8 minus lambda, 3 minus lambda, minus 6 equals 0. Uh, it's entirely possible, depending on how comfortable you are working in your head, that maybe you could jump straight to just writing this form down as your first step, and if so, that's fine. Uh, we still need to actually kind of multiply things out here. Uh, this is a quadratic, but we need to simplify, so let's see if I multiply out the, poly the parentheses here. I'll get what? Lambda squared uh, minus 3 lambda, minus 8 lambda is minus 11 lambda, uh, 24, and then combining in the minus 6, so 18. And now, so that is the characteristic polynomial, right? We've answered part 1 of the question here. Solving the characteristic polynomial will give us the real eigenvalues. And again, feel free to use quadratic formula if you like, but otherwise, if it's fairly easy to factor, that's not a bad way to go. This is minus 2 and minus 9. So eigenvalues of 2 and 9. And we are done. We have found the real eigenvalues, and we have found the characteristic polynomial. Um, for 10, so all of 1 through 8 are, are 2 by 2 matrices, so the process will be pretty similar to this. Uh, starting with 9 through 14, uh, they give you some 3 by 3s. Same idea, you know that finding the determinant of a 3 by 3 is a little more work. And if you go all the way back to section 3.1, there was a special shortcut for doing 3 by 3s where you did sort of dip some down arrows and then some up arrows. Uh, if you like that method, that is totally fine. There's also just the cofactor expansion method, which works for matrices of any size. And I think I'll go ahead and just do the, the cofactor expansion method. So keep in mind we are still trying to find the determinant of 3 minus lambda, 1, 1, 0, 5 minus lambda, 0, uh, negative 2, 0, 7 minus lambda. We want that determinant equal to 0. 
Uh, so to do the cofactor expansion, one thing you've got to remind yourself of is that little plus minus plus minus checkerboard pattern. So this term would be positive and that one negative and positive, negative, positive, positive, <laughs> sorry, positive, negative, uh, positive, negative, positive. And then you can pick any row or any column you want to expand along to get your determinant. A uh, good choice to me seems like the second row because of those two zeros, so I will pick that. Uh, so technically the determinant would have zero times some stuff, but we don't care about that, and plus five minus lambda times some stuff that we do have to care about, and then minus zero times some stuff. Okay, so two terms are zeroed out, which is the whole reason we picked that row. Uh, but we do need to do 5 minus lambda times the 2 by 2 determinant that's left from crossing out that row and that column. Uh, so that would be 3 minus lambda times 7 minus lambda uh, minus negative 2, so plus 2. That is the characteristic polynomial, although they will want it multiplied out. And because we are all hot shot math nerds in this class, this is fun stuff. Right? We actually like multiplying out polynomials. I mean, how often do you get to come back and do this kind of thing? So let the good times roll, people. Uh, we've got 5 minus lambda. I'm going to go ahead and multiply out this stuff inside uh, here first. So let's see, that would be lambda squared uh, minus 7 lambda minus 3 lambda is minus 10 lambda um, plus 21 and then the extra plus 2, so plus 23 total in there. And we still get to multiply this stuff out and people have different ways of remembering how to multiply a two-term polynomial times a three-term polynomial. Uh, if you like the box, you can do that, or if you like drawing all the little arrows, say it's gotta be five times that, and five times that, and five times that, and then minus lambda times each of those things. Uh, however you like keeping things organized is fine. I'm gonna see if I can combine like terms as I write this out. So the only cubic term will come from these two right here. That's minus lambda cubed. Then there'll be a squared term, uh, five lambda squared, and you'll also get 50 lambda squared there. Uh, so 55 lambda squared. Then the plain lambda terms are um, that doesn't seem right. What did I do wrong? Let me back up. I'm trying to be too much of a math nerd. Too much of a show off. Well, let's see. The lambda squared terms come from this one. 5 times lambda squared, so there's 5. And then this one, plus 10 lambda squared. So that'd be 15 lambda squared. Maybe I should be doing the box. <laughs> Clearly, I can't handle this method. Okay, uh, let's get the lambda terms. Let's see, there's minus 50 and minus 23, so minus 73 lambda, and then just the constant term, which is 5 times 23, which is 115. equals zero. So that should be the characteristic polynomial. I'm actually going to put the video on pause just for a second and uh, check to make sure I didn't screw something up. Okay, yeah, so that's correct. That's the characteristic polynomial. And it's a cubic, so there's probably three eigenvalues, but fortunately they did not ask us to find them. Okay, so let's move on to number 16, which will actually give us our last new idea for this section. Uh, 15, 16, 17, say list the real eigenvalues uh, repeated according to their multiplicities. And they give you like four by fours or even bigger. And 
again, you know the basic thing you would need to be doing is like the determinant of, and then you'd have like three minus lambda, zero, 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 six, two minus lambda, zero, 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 three, six minus lambda, zero, and two, three, three, minus five minus lambda. So the determinant of that lovely critter equal to zero. And we know normally finding the determinant of a four by four matrix, painful. However, there is something special about this particular four by four matrix, which is what? Right, triangular matrix. It's got zeros above the diagonal, and the I think 15 and 17 have the zeros below the diagonal, but all three of those are triangular matrices. And there's a beautiful, beautiful thing about finding the determinant of a triangular matrix. No pain. If you remember back in chapter three, if you have a triangular matrix, the determinant is just the product of the main diagonal entries. So really, the and they didn't even ask for the characteristic equation here, but the characteristic equation would be 3 minus lambda, just go right down the diagonal, 3 minus lambda, 2 minus lambda, 6 minus lambda, negative 5 minus lambda. Basically comes from doing the cofactor expansion across the top row. The other three terms are all zero, and then when you do this one, pick the top row again, and pick the top row again, you just get the, this product here. Anyway, that is the characteristic polynomial, which I am not going to multiply out. It's already in factored form, which is what we want anyway, right? Because you know, we want to solve, find the lambda values that make this zero, and it's very easy to see them here in this factored form. Uh, it's three and two and six and negative five. So really, if you have a triangular matrix and you want the eigenvalues, they are just the entries on the main diagonal. You don't need to write out anything. Uh, you can say, hey, the real eigenvalues are three, two, six, and negative five. Uh, multiplicity means was it repeated? None of these are repeated, uh, so they all have multiplicity of one. If it had been three, two, two, negative five, then the two would have had multiplicity two because uh, it was repeated. Uh, but these are all multiplicity one. Uh, and notice too, just as by way of preview, that they keep saying real eigenvalues, which makes you think that at some point we might get some complex eigenvalues, and you are not disappointed. Uh, we will get that in a future section. Okay, so we're basically done. I think you've seen the three types of problems you're going to get on the homework. Before I turn you loose on the homework, I just wanted to point out, take us back to the invertible matrix theorem one more time. Uh, we've got all these, whoops, that's not it. We've got all these statements, um, A through R, that are equivalent to saying the matrix is invertible. You know, all these things like the homogeneous system only has the zero vector solution and they call them span and the rank is the same as the number of columns and all of these things. Uh, we actually get to add a couple more now. So meet S and T. Uh, T is actually just picking up this one that we had back from chapter 3. It said the determinant is not 0. Um, S says that 0 is not an eigenvalue. Uh, keep in mind 0 is a legitimate eigenvalue in general. Uh, but if you have a zero as an eigenvalue, that means that the vector that goes in, whatever it is, uh, comes out as the zero vector, which means that you have more than just the trivial solution. And so zero can't be an eigenvalue uh, to match all these other things. Uh, it's too bad, by the way, that we don't get into chapter seven, where we could actually finish out the invertible matrix theorem, because we're not done yet. A through T is not enough. Uh, we also have 
if you get into spectral decomposition, u and v and w and x. A through x is the full invertible matrix theorem. But you'll have to save spectral decomp for your next linear algebra course. Uh, you usually get to that in a second, second linear algebra class. Uh, so I think you are ready to tackle the homework. And I will see you in section 5.3.